Hello and welcome to another lecture, uh, economics lecture by Mr. Gutchik. Uh, today we're going to talk about something called the theory of production. We're just going to briefly kind of hit on that. And so on this slide you're going to see all the uh, different things that we're going to learn today. And so uh, the first thing under the theory of production that we want to talk about is something called the short run. Now these are, are periods um, not measured by time. In other words, I can't tell you the short run is a year. And I can't tell you, well, the long run is 10 years. They're not periods of time. Instead, they're measured by different types of cost. You'll see fixed cost, and you'll see the term variable cost. Fixed costs are those costs that are fixed regardless of whether you make zero of a product or an infinite amount. So they're going to be things like rent. Um, they will be things like salaried workers that regardless of how many of whatever good or service you make, you're still going to have to pay those costs. Variable costs are costs that change based on the number of products you produce. And so there'll be things like utilities, um, things like raw materials. Those things are variable costs. So in the short run, you're going to have one fixed cost and one variable cost. And the example is right here in the upper right-hand corner there. That's actually a picture of Black Friday. Um, that's a good example of a short run adjustment that a business can make. So let's say you're the owner of a local store, let's say a local Target store. Um, you're going to make a short run adjustment based on the number of consumers you're going to have that are going to enter your store at midnight or one in the morning or whatever the case may be. So you're going to have a fixed cost and that fixed cost is going to be your building. You're still going to have to pay the rent of your building regardless. That's your one fixed cost. Your variable costs, let's say you hire more workers. Let's say you put more products in the, uh, you buy more products from your suppliers. Those are going to be variable costs. And so, so that's a short run adjustment. You're going to have at least one fixed cost and at least one variable cost. Long run, all costs are variable costs. They're all going to vary. They're not going to be fixed based on how many you produce. And so... I've got a picture there of Valor being constructed, and I couldn't find a picture of the, the Valor Arts building. But a long-run adjustment that Valor is going to make is the construction of a new arts building. Um, because all those costs are variable costs. You won't know how many people you're going to have to hire. You don't know um, exactly uh, how much it's going to cost to heat it, uh, to run it, what your rent will be on it. So all those costs are variable costs. And so in the long run, all costs are variable costs. All right, we're going to go to the law of variable proportions and the production, production function. In order for me to do that, I'm going to bring up an Excel uh, sheet right now. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to want to copy some of these, um, some of these numbers in your notebook. Actually, you're going to want to copy this entire chart. So you're going to start with the number of workers. You want to go from 0 to 12. And you're going to want to talk about their total production. Now, this is the law of variable proportions. You're going to want to make this, this table in your, um, in your notes. So you're going to want to also put marginal production and regions of production there. Now, you're going to see the colors match up once you start finding marginal production. There's going to be an equation that you're going to need to know for this class, and that's how you find marginal product. Anytime you see the word marginal in front of something, first off, you should know what the definition for marginal is. It means extra. But anytime you see marginal anything, you can always pretty much go on this, this rule, that the equation is going to be the change in whatever you're trying to find, in this case it's product, over the change in, in this case it's going to be number of workers or quantity. So, change in product over the change in workers. The nice thing is the change in workers is always one. So it'll be the change in product always over 1. Another way you can do that is by subtracting the top or the bottom number from the top number. So 7 and 0 is 7. So at worker number 1, the total product is 7. Um, in class, I'll explain um, this using a pizza factory and why we see the law of variable proportions take place. What it's basically saying is that one worker, I can produce 7 of something. If I hire the second worker, we can produce 20. We're going to say pizzas because that's going to be the, the um, example that I'm going to use in class. The third worker, when I hire the third worker, we can make 38 pizzas. Fourth, and so you can start to see that. 
the marginal is the change in, and so that's going to be this graph down here. It's going to be the change in. Make sure the if you didn't find the change in, if you didn't pause this and find the change in by yourself, that you can do that for a test. And again, all you're going to want to do is subtract the bottom number from the top. And so you can see now the change in the product, which is the marginal product. So from 0 to 7, the change was 7. From worker 1 to 2, the change in the product, the amount we made, was 13. From uh, when I hired the third worker, we made 18 more pizzas. And that's what it's basically looking at. at the, when I hired the fourth worker, we made 24 more pizzas. And so on and so forth, all the way down to actually you get negative numbers, and that's stage three. What I want you to do in your notes is go ahead and draw a graph um, putting the, um, the number of workers um, down at the bottom on the x-axis and your total product on the y-axis. So go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and graph the total product points. So go ahead and graph where 7 is, where 20 is. You're going to see a graph that's going to slope um, up very, very rapidly. It's going to slow down. And then eventually at the top, the law of what we call diminishing, diminishing marginal uh, product sets in. So diminishing marginal product sets in at the, th at, the, uh, at the third, or I'm sorry, the 11th worker. And what that does is it goes into negatives. And again, I will explain this further in class, but it, think about it this way. I make seven pizzas by myself. I hire the next person. We make 13 and so on down the road. So much so that I hired the 11th worker. There's nothing to do for that 11th worker where the, the capital, the capital we have um, is running out. And so maybe um, my job is to answer phones. Phones aren't ringing. So I'm actually taking away the product. Maybe um, my job is to take pizzas out of the oven. And we have so many workers that I stand around and I'm not taking any pizzas out. So instead of making pizzas my only job, we specialize too much. My only job is to sit there and take out pizzas. So there are no pizzas to take out, so I don't do anything. And so we actually start to lose product. And again, your graph is going to look like a, a candy cane. Um, so it'll, it'll go up rapidly and then it, it will start to diminish, um, which is going to be in this blue, the stage two, and then it's actually going to go negative. Stage one, so you want to also label the region of production right here. Stage one is what we call increased returns. For every, hire, every worker that I hire, I increasingly make more pizzas. Stage two is what we call diminishing returns, which each, with each worker I hire, we're making more pizzas. Look at the total production is going up. We're making more pizzas. We're just doing so at a diminishing rate. And then at stage three is what we call negative returns. So with the 11th worker um, that I hire, <clears throat> we're actually going into negative. We're taking product out. We're actually losing product at this point. Um, and so uh, the question that always comes up is at what point should businesses stop hiring? And you should be able to tell almost from this, all right? And the answer, of course, is always, well, it depends, right? If it's just solely, if you don't know anything about the cost, it's going to be at the fourth worker, or, or I'm sorry, at the 10th worker, the fourth marginal product. Um, because at that point, then at the 11th worker, we're actually taking product away. But it depends on your cost. And so you're going to see this spreadsheet and you're going to freak um, because there are a lot of costs in here. I understand there's a lot of revenue. But all I want you to do for now is just copy down again, pizzas per hour, copy 0 through 15, put fixed costs in the next column. It's going to be 50, remember, whether we make 0 or we make 10 trillion, it's always going to be 50. That's going to include my rent. So go ahead and put fixed costs, and you could put a 50 and just draw a line down. Variable costs, now I've got to give you the variable costs because that's going to depend on how many pizzas we're making in an hour. And so go ahead and fill in the variable cost. Total cost is real easy. Fixed cost plus variable cost equal total cost. I would write that down in, in your notes if I were you. So fixed cost plus variable cost equals total cost. Next comes the marginal cost. Remember, I told you anytime you see marginal, you can pretty much count on the fact that it's going to be change in whatever the marginal thing you're looking for over the change in quantity. Again, the change in quantity is always one. And so the marginal cost is always going to be the change in 
than your total cost. In this case, it's always five until we get down to the 15th pizza and then it's 30. Uh, that may not always be the case. You can take the bottom number, subtract it from the top. Bottom number, subtract it from the top. The marginal revenue, don't worry. Write down marginal revenue, write down 10 and make sure that it's 10 all the way down. But don't worry about the marginal revenue. I'm gonna explain that a lot more in class. So hold off on that. Total revenue, all right, how you find total revenue is the same way you did for demand elasticity. It's price, which in this case it's gonna be marginal revenue, times quantity, which in this case it's gonna be pizza. So total revenue is the same equation regardless of what you're looking at. It's always price times quantity, regardless of whether it's demand elasticity or whether it's the production cost, it's the exact same thing. Profit's real easy, it's total revenue, right there, minus total cost. When you see the red number here, that's bad. That means you're losing money. When you see the black number here, that's good. That means you're actually making a profit. Again, remember that businesses aren't in business to make profit. They're in business to maximize profit. And we'll talk more about that later. Um, but at this point, again, I'll ask you, well, how many pizzas then should this company make? And the answer is 14, because that's where their profit is the greatest. They're still earning a profit at 12 pizzas. But if they stop there, they're leaving $15 on the table. And so they're going to want to make 14 pizzas. If you've ever heard the term operating in the red, that even up here it says it's bad. Even Excel knows that operating in the red is bad. And then operating in the black is positive. And that really does it for the um, production function and the theory of production. Um, if you've got questions, make sure to ask them in class. Um, and make sure again to... to uh, ask me about um, how making pizzas really fits into this whole thing. So thank you and have a nice evening.